Do we want to have... So we're going to get started in just a few minutes if you all want to have a seat um, in the gallery. Um, unless you're targeted to be a stakeholder on the floor. And we'll get started in about 30 seconds. Enjoy your snack while we're waiting to get started. Make yourselves comfortable. Were you able to get in? and get started. Um, so uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Diana Saavedra, and I'm the uh, superintendent for the El Paso Independent School District. So um, I want to thank you all very much for taking the time to be with us this evening. Um, this is the first of 10 Hopes and Dreams listening tours that we'll be doing in the school district. Um, these are organized by feeder pattern. And uh, just wanted to share with each one of you what an honor and a privilege it's been uh, to be in El Paso. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful place to be. I've been welcomed by the community very graciously, and so I thank you all for the warm welcome. Um, I'm just really excited uh, to be here, and again, I thank you all for being here. It's really important to me as a superintendent, uh, when I think about a school district, the school district is a community organization in my mind, right? They're your children, your schools, your money, right? And I'm charged with the responsibility of leading the organization. So it's important to me, as we begin to think about what's possible for El Paso ISD, that's something that is a community responsibility. It's something that um, I, I feel very strongly about engaging the community in a conversation about where we want this school district to go. So number one, I want to thank you for agreeing to be part of this conversation and engaging with me. It'll be the first of many conversations that we come back to. Um, I also want to thank those of you who are in the gallery, in the audience, uh, because although you might not have been a stakeholder that was identified by your campus to join in the conversation today live with me, we certainly will engage you as you're sitting in the gallery and experiencing and being part of the conversation. I also want to say welcome to those of you who are watching li this live stream at home. Again, I want to reach out to as, men, as much of the community as possible because I want the voices of community members, I want the voices of students, I want the voices of teachers and staff members, and I want the voices of all parents uh, to be part of this conversation. Um, and so let's get started. Um, I have a few things uh, to share with you. So I've been asked the question, what is it that you really mean when you talk about hopes and dreams? All right? And uh, so rather than have a conversation about everything that, might, that you might not enjoy or um, like about the school district. Um, I, I felt like it was important for us to really launch a conversation and engage on what are our hopes and dreams and what's possible for this school district. Let's think about what the word hope means. The word hope really means a feeling or belief that something is possible. So what do we hope for our children? What do we hope for our community? What do we hope for our school district, for our schools? And the word dream really refers to something that you've wanted very much to do, be, or have for a long time. So what do we dream our school district can become in terms of the educational experience for our students? So it's important for us to frame the conversation with those two terms in mind. What are our hopes and what are our dreams? What's possible for EPISD? So what is this hopes and dreams framework about? All right, well really, as I shared with you, it's about visioning for this school district as a community. 
because we are all part of the schools in the community. The school district is the hub um, for the entire community of El Paso. And so it's important for us as a community to vision and figure out what is it that we want um, for our schools and our organization. And this is community engagement that will really help us as a school district begin to shape what are the priorities of the community? What is it that you say that you want? Um, this is going to help us with developing strategic plans and goals for the school district going forward. And it'll help us figure out what is the profile of the graduate that we want to create for El Paso ISD? What is the learner profile that we want to create? So this process really helps us launch and begin to plan for the future because what we'll do as we engage together, we're going to be collecting this information and I'm going to be working together with the Board of Trustees uh, for us to begin to shape what our goals, what our strategic plan, what this school district might look, look like going forward. So um, again, you've heard me talk a little bit about what we mean by hopes and dreams. And so at each table, you'll notice that we don't necessarily, we, we don't have you seated um, as a student table or a parent table or a community table. We have you sitting uh, with all of the various dif different stakeholders that we think are important for, to engage in this conversation. And when we think about this conversation, as I said, I really, we really, as a school district, want to understand what are the hopes and dreams of students for their future. So students, as you're thinking about providing information for us, I want you to be thinking about what do you want for your future? What do you want from your school? What do you want from your educational experience, right? Parents, what do you want for your children? What are the hopes and dreams that you have for your children? And how can we develop an organization and a system that helps us realize that? Educators for their students. So teachers, what do you want for your students? When you walked in and became a teacher in El Paso ISD, you had a vision for your students. You wanted to give back to your community. Your role in the organization is critical and important. So your voice at this table will help us understand what you as an educator want for your students and how we develop a system that helps you realize that. Community members, what do you want for your neighborhoods? Because a, a school is important to the development of a neighborhood and for a neighborhood to thrive. So what is it that you need from the school so that your neighborhood can continue to thrive and grow and develop economically and be healthy? And then for the entire audience, whether you're here in the gallery or whether you're watching at home, what do we want for the future of El Paso ISD. Any questions so far? All right. So I, I felt like it was important to set the stage so that as when we start engaging in some of the conversation that you'll understand what we're looking for in terms of information. So engagement, like I said, in this process will determine the community's priorities and, and really help to shape what is our mission, what is our vision, what are our core beliefs and commitments as an organization, and that, how does this information help us begin to formulate the goals for the school district. That will lead to a strategic plan with specific strategies um, and again, will help us kind of build and shape the future for the school district. So. Let's get started. Um, as I said, this is kind of a unique platform and a unique way for us to engage in this conversation. And a big part of what we wanted to do was number one, guarantee attendance, which is one of the reasons why we tapped into key stakeholders. But again, we wanted to invite people to join us in the gallery. And those of you who are participating at home, we wanted you to be engaged. So we had to figure out what platform can we use that allows us to really capture this information and help us engage in a conversation. And thank you so much. Let me stop for just a second and introduce our board president, Mr. Al Velarde, who represents this district. Uh, this, this, um, 
the Burgess um, feeder pattern. Thank you so much, Mr. Velarde, for joining us and, and engaging in the conversation along with us. So, um, so thought exchange, which is the reason why those of you who are, are, at, are at the tables, you can engage either with a laptop that you've been issued, you can, or you can engage with your phone, right, or a tablet, whatever you have in front of you. Those of you who are in the gallery, we encourage you to participate as well. You can get your phone out, we'll uh, put the QR codes on the screen, and we'll ask you to participate with us as well. And those of you who are listening uh, via live stream, again, if you're at home, pull out your phones, pull out your tablet, pull out your laptop, because we want your information and we want you to engage as well. So the Thought Exchange Program is designed to do three things. First of, all, first of all, we want to generate thoughts. What is your thinking around these hopes and dreams and, 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 and what the future and what the possibilities are for El Paso ISD? So we want to generate thoughts first. And then what we want to do is we want you to be able to go through and look at the thoughts that have been provided and then rate those thoughts. Do you agree, disagree, right? And then we want to be able to use that to assess the ideas. Because if you generate thoughts and you rate those thoughts, then what Thought Exchange does is it will formulate the thoughts that are rising to the top. Right? And so it'll assess which are the thoughts that are, are the most po popular, the ones that are being generated by most of those who are participating in the Thought Exchange. Right, and, and it'll, it'll bring those to the top. And you'll see that in a minute when we begin to generate some of that information. It's very easy to use, um, and we, so it's not gonna be cumbersome, and we will have several people that'll walk at, to each table. If you have any problems, we'll, um, we'll help you walk through that. And I'm gonna ask you not to uh, engage in the exchange yet. We'll launch everyone at the same time, but, um, We'll, we'll be there to help you just in case you need some help with your technology. And number three, the responses are anonymous because what we know is that many times people are reluctant to share their thoughts for fear of retaliation or whatever the case may be. This platform allows you to share thoughts anonymously. So those of you who are listening at home, those of you who are in the gallery, and even those of you who are live here and are part of the stakeholder group, I want you to be honest and authentic with the thoughts that you share. It's important for us to hear it all. Good, bad, or otherwise, otherwise right? So, um, so let's think about this. Before I launch into the first um, thought exchange, I want to share with you what I already know. I've been on the job since January the 4th, and as I've been on the job, I've been visiting schools, I've been talking to internal stakeholders, I've been talking to external stakeholders, and I've attended a number of different meetings with community groups. And what I know in having conversations already is that we have a job to do as an organization to restore the faith of the community back into the school district. There are a number of stakeholders in our organization, whether you're internal stakeholders or parents or community stakeholders that have lost faith in the district. So a big job and a big charge for us is to begin to restore that faith back in the district. I also know that over the last several years, we've begun to, our enrollment has begun to decline for a number of different reasons. So I know that that's gonna be something that we'll need to address as an organization. We also have aging facilities. How many of you knew, knew that the average age of school buildings in El Paso ISD as the oldest school district in the county is 50 years old? 50 years old. That's a high average for the age of, build, of school buildings, especially when we need to educate students in the 21st century and the technology age. And learning spaces look very different today than they did 50 years ago, right? So that is also something that is a challenge. And then 
I've also heard a lot of information as I meet with teachers, as I meet with principals, and a lot of, and even parents, about DA emphasizing high stakes assessment. That means we need to do more for our children than just prepare them to be successful on a state assessment exam. In Texas, that's the star, right? We, 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 we need to do more than that for our students. So that is something that I've heard loud and clear. So within my first you know, 60 to 80 days, these are some of the things that are bubbling to the top. I also sent out uh, last week a pre-listening session question out to the entire community so that we could begin to engage people in the thought exchange platform. And the question that we asked was, what are some important conversations we need to have together or things that you all feel that I need to know as a superintendent in order to begin to chart the future course of the school district? So there was two reasons why we did this. Number one, it was important for us to hear those things and for people to answer the question. But more importantly, I sent it out so that the community could become acclimated to the platform and, and see how, how it worked, right? And it was very simple. We got a lot of uh, responses. So what are some of the thoughts that were shared in that initial thought exchange? Some of the thoughts that were, were shared were, I think people are really concerned about employee compensation. And that's coming from a number of different stakeholders, not necessarily just internal stakeholders, because what the community has recognized is that educators have given of themselves for the last two years uh, in response to the pandemic and people feel strongly about wanting to make sure that we compensate them fairly, right? And I think that that's fair. So that's something, uh, a thought that bubbled to the top as we sent out this preliminary question. Class size is also something that came to the forefront. And I would say class size and those who are secondary teachers, probably class load um, would be something, or student load, not class load, student load, right? Because at the secondary level, you might have a number of different sections. So your student load is something that matters because you might have a large class first period and then third period you have a small class. But at the end of the day, your student load is something that's important. But class size is also something that we need to be cognizant of because if we want our teachers to be effective and deliver high quality instruction, the size of the class has to be manageable, right? There's uh, curriculum, some thoughts about curriculum and I think specifically about assessment and how much assessment we engage in um, you know, as part of the teaching, learning, teaching and learning process. Safety and discipline was something that also bubbled up to the top. The safety of schools, some of our traffic patterns, and then discipline in terms of making sure that our schools uh, are not riddled with bullying behavior, right? That we're addressing bullying um, in our schools. And then um, college readiness was something that is, you know, so, that, that's a pretty no brain, pretty much a, a no brainer. We're all concerned about how prepared are our students when they graduate from El Paso ISD to go on to the next level in terms of college or career readiness. And then food and nutrition. I would tell you that I got significant thoughts about the quality of you know lunches and breakfasts and things like that so that's something that you know is weighing heavy on people's minds as they think about um, you know children and you know that's a big part of what we do to educate children if children are hungry they're not ready for learning right so them having healthy breakfasts that they enjoy and a healthy lunch that they enjoy is a big part of the learning process. So these are some of the initial thoughts that came from the preliminary thought exchange question that we sent out a week ago. This is kind of a word cloud in terms of a lot of words that were generated um, as people shared their thoughts. You can see for yourself there's, you know, test is in there, classroom support, learning, uh, a campus, you know, there's a lot of uh, individual campus, you know, information. Uh, culture is a word that you see on there. Um, and so it was, it was important for us to not only generate the thoughts, but 
what does that look like in terms of the most common words that were used to describe or, or to um, share thoughts? So today's conversation, um, I want to begin to engage you. And this is the thought that you're going to engage in when we begin to kick off the first what I call thought exchange, right? So the first exchange is going to be centered around a question that says, as you imagine El Paso, the El Paso ISD of the future, what do you envision is possible for our students? So at this time, what I'm going to ask you to do, and, and I want us to be comfortable with silence, all right, because um, as we begin to engage in the platform, you all are going to need some time to think. I will give you time to discuss, but the first phase of the exchange is for you to go into the platform using the QR code that they, that's there. Those of you who are at the table, you have the QR code on your placemat. It's the QR code that's 501. Uh, if you will enter that and get to the actual exchange. Those of you who are listening live stream, pull your phone out. You can uh, type in the number or go to tjoin.com or use the QR QR code to um, access the platform and the questions so that we can gather your thoughts as well. And those of you who are in the gallery, please get your phones out and share your thoughts with us. Even if you're an employee of the district who's sitting in the gallery, we want your thoughts as well. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to um, get into the exchange and begin to answer the questions and share your thoughts. I'm going to give you about five minutes to get in there, and um, if you need help, just raise your hand, and we'll have people walking around to assist you. Let me get Alice.
We're going to give you about another minute to continue. Y'all have about 20 seconds. Okay, we're gonna give you about 30 more seconds. Make sure that they're ready. Right. We're going to give you about 30 more seconds, as, as um, along with uh, including thoughts in there. We also want you to go in, as I said, and continue to rate some of the thoughts. And feel free to eat while you're working. <laughs> Okay, so um, so let's just pause for a second. If you all would just pause for a second. I'm, I'm gonna, um, and, and if you're finishing your final thought, go ahead and go in there and finish your final thought or if you're doing your final ratings. I'd like to kind of call your attention to the screens at this point. So as you've gone into the platform to kind of generate your thoughts and go in and rate the thoughts, if you'll notice um, the picture up on the screen that is kind of a web, right? So a big part of what this platform does is that not only do people generate thoughts, but it begins to connect the thoughts uh, that people are submitting along with the rating, right? And so let's go through some of the, the thoughts that have risen to the top, because any, any thought that gets a rating of four or more uh, four or higher is considered a thought that's uh, shared by a number of different stakeholders, right? So the first one up here to be successful, knowledgeable, and feel that they can accomplish their goals so that they will strive to achieve great things in their lives long after they leave our school. That was the thought that was rated the highest. My vision for EPISD is that all students are geared and ready for higher education. 
All right, that was uh, rated 4.3. Engaging classrooms where assessment is not the only focus. All right, um, I envision a district uh, or it takes a community to raise our children and so together El Paso parents, teachers, EPISD schools have to make a commitment to be in this together for the future of El Paso. We need to be role models and support our future leaders. That also got a 4.3. All right, so there's a number of different thoughts that are rising to the top. So what I want you to do is at your tables is to spend a little time having a conversation about some of the thoughts that you're seeing uh, up here on the screen as we scroll up and down. Have a conversation about when we, when we say, I envision a district uh, that all, where all students are geared and ready for higher ed education, what does that really need, mean? Try to break it down a little bit. Or when it says it takes a community to raise our children, or I envision that our students will be able to be competitive in the job market, right? So have a conversation at your table for just a little bit about what would that look like, sound like, feel like in the classroom, in the school, so try to peel the onion a little bit. And you all have little notepads and a pencil at your table. Um, is the pencil sharpened? No. But you might have some pens. Uh, if not, we'll try to get you some. I think that there's some um, Sharpie markers there. You all might want to just, as a table, log some of your discussion. And then you can leave those in the center of the table. And then I'll have a little bit of a share out in just a minute. But at your table, talk a little bit about some of the thoughts that have been generated. What would that look like, sound like, feel like in terms of strategies to help us get there? And if you're sitting in the gallery, feel free to have conversations amongst yourselves while you're sitting with there next to your partner. <laughs> Gustavo, will you start the timer for about two minutes? <laughs>
I'm going to give you about 30 more seconds for your discussion and then I'll ask a, a few to, to share. So if I could uh, kind of bring us back to um, the conversation in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so I'm, I, I need Chief Chavira and uh, Mr. Reveles. Each one of you has a microphone, right? And so I'm going to ask uh, for people to share out some of the conversation that you were having at your table. And so they'll come to you with a microphone so that you can share. And so as we share out, again, I want you all to think about, based on the, some of the thoughts that were generated, 
What can you tell me about what that might look like, sound like, you know, feel like in terms of, you know, what would we need to do to make that a reality, right? And I want to hear from students. I also want to hear from parent. I want to hear from staff, and I want to hear from community. So we'll take, you know, five or six comments um, in the share out. So raise your hand if you'd like to share um, something that you all discussed at your table. Do we want to start with students? Students, are you bold and courageous? You want to start? Okay, Gustavo, I think we have one over here. Come on. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh huh. So you want to stand up and share, sweetie. What is your name? Uh, Miranda Herrera. Miranda Herrera. And what school are you from, Miranda? MacArthur. MacArthur. All right. So Miranda. <laughs> what can you tell us about some of the conversation that you all had at your table? Uh, to be like, for students to be successful and knowledgeable, like to provide the right tools and resources. Okay, so tools and resources are important for us to kind of realize some of the thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what else? And then uh, positive attitudes from both students and teachers. Okay, positive attitude from both students and teachers. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And I'll tell you, some of what she just shared, yes, resources and tools for us to deliver the high quality instruction that we expect in the classroom. But more than that, I think that there's a focus on culture that sometimes doesn't, how many of you have ever heard the saying that, that culture trumps strategy every day of the week? And so if you don't have a culture that really nurtures what we say we want for our students, then we're losing the battle right out of the starting gate, right? So it's about a positive attitude. It's about commitment. It's about all of us being invested because that's what it really takes. I think I saw a thought that said the entire community rallying around this uh, business of education and educating our students. So thank you so much, Miranda, for, for sharing with us. Who else? Who else wants to share? Now that she's been courageous and bold. <laughs> right over here. All right. Thank you. Tell us who you are, what school you're from, and then share your thoughts. Okay. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Lainey Bajarano. I'm here from Burgess High School. And Let's give her a hand, everyone. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> One of our um, thoughts surrounding the table was knowing what our post-secondary options are. So aside from just college, like trade schools or military options, because um, that's something that not a lot of us know about. For us, it's like, it's just, OK, you go to college, and then you go get a job. But we would like to know more of what our next options are outside right. from college. Well, wonderful. And thank you for sharing that, because that is so important. I think that something that I hear from students when I go visit students. So when I visit schools, I go into classrooms. I engage students. I ask them questions. And I, I, because student voice is very, very important to me. And there's a number of students, as I've gone to several high schools and several middle schools, that really share with me that they want to know what their options are. Because, you know, college is not the pathway for every child. And what I would tell you is that our society now and many of the jobs that are available to our, to our young people, some of them do not require a college education. Some of them require a specific skill and industry certification for a student to, um, you know, to kind of, you know, get a job. But there's a number of different options. That may lead to college in the future, but it may not be something that a student wants to do in the immediate. So we need to figure out what are the strengths of all of our students and do we offer the options and are we educating them about the options so that they can maximize their strength and find their path to opportunity. One of the things that I share with students when they ask me, what's your goal, Ms. Saavedra, as the superintendent of El Paso ISD? And what I share with them is that I have a firm belief that education is the opportunity equalizer. And it's my job to work with staff and the community to make sure that we can create an educational environment where a student can maximize their strength. And if they knock on the door of opportunity, that door is open to them 
to realize their dreams and become the best version of themselves. That's what we really want for our students. So thank you so much for sharing that. Who else wants to share? One more student and then we'll get some parents involved here. All right, one more student. I haven't heard from one of our, were you middle, you were elementary or middle school? Middle school, and I've heard from a high school. Come on, one of my elementary, be a brave soul and uh, we'll help you out. Who wants to, do you want to share? Yes, uh, no, thank you. you don't want to share? Okay, I'm not going to make you share if you don't want to share. Is there an elementary student who wants to share? Would you like to share, young man? No, would you? No? Okay, all right, well we'll move on from students. Would you like to share, sweetie? Come on, it's not too bad. We'll help you, I'll stand with you and help you. Oh, yeah, that. See? He has a great thought to share, I know. Share your name first, Josiah. Mm -hmm. My name is Josiah Hernandez, and I am from Hawkins Elementary. All right, let's give Josiah a big round of applause. Um, my thought was we need more communication with students. All right. Can you share a little bit more about what you mean by communication with students? More help. Okay, more help. All right, well, you know, and I'm going to expand on that, and then you give me a thumbs up if I'm on target with what your thought really means. So when I talk to students and I engage with them in the classroom, I ask them sometimes about what do you value about your teachers? What can you tell me about your, the teachers at your school? And when I ask them about what they value in a teacher and what the teachers at their school provide, the thing that they share with me the most is that our teachers create a safe environment in the classroom. Our teachers develop relationships with us in the classroom. Our teachers provide us support in the classroom and they teach us until we actually learn what it is, you know, that they're teaching us. Does that kind of all right, he gave me a thumbs up. Well, thank you, Josiah, I appreciate you sharing. So, I mean, that's what our students value, you know, from their teachers, and I think that we have teachers across El Paso ISD that do that for our students. And so our students are telling us that they want more from that. I also ask students, if I was going out to recruit teachers tomorrow for your school or for El Paso ISD, what kinds of teachers should I be looking for? And that's what they describe to me. They want teachers that care, they want teachers that, you know, listen to them and who, you know, and uh, like I said, who support them and really create a safe learning environment for them in the classroom. So thanks again. Let's give Josiah a round of applause. All right, so I'd like to hear from parent, staff, or teacher, and a community member. So what can you tell me? All right. Let us know who you are, who you represent, and so forth, right? Yes. My name's Patricia Amesaga, and I'm a teacher at Ross Middle School. Okay, wonderful. And our table, we discussed how the Sierra Vista Neighborhood Association is involved with the school. They're always here at sporting events or any um, activities that are outside that are happening with the students. And we talked about how they've drawn in the community to be part of the school. And then the students right here, who were also my students when they were in middle school, um, <laughs> the students right here said they went out into the community because there's always been a parking problem here at Burgess, mm -hmm. parking in front of par uh, people's houses or in the neighborhoods, and they mm -hmm. didn't like it. The kids went out into the community and told them, you know, we really need to have some parking. Can we work together? And now they say they have parking that's a lot better for them. So going out in the community, and I think the Neighborhood Association being part of things that go on here has made a difference here. All right, well, leveraging our community resources is critical, is what I hear from Patricia and from our students that, you know, there are leadership opportunities and uh, opportunities for them to give back and to really become problem solvers. I, I saw that as one of the thoughts that rose to the top, right? That we want our students to become critical thinkers, to be problem solvers, and really to understand the importance of giving back to the community. So thank you, students, for sharing that thought. And thank you, Patricia. I think we have another thought over here. All right, Burgess students are the smartest people on the planet. They're teachers. 
but <laughs> uh, it's been my experience that if you put any and all of our kids into advanced classes, be it AP or dual credit, mostly dual credit, they will excel if we have supports in place. Yes, it's a college level class, but it's dual credit so we can give them high school kind of support. So this year I, I teach dual credit and a lot of my non Bex or non uh, you know, degree seeking were taken out of my class mm -hmm. because they weren't in the Bex program. And that mm -hmm. was frustrating to me because they were making great gains. Mm -hmm. And here they are experiencing discouragement when they could be experiencing free college. Right. So I'd like to see more of these fabulous and perfect people in advanced academics. Right, absolutely. And can you share with us your name? And mm -hmm. I teach at the greatest school on the planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Burgess. Burgess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. You know, one of the things um, that students also share with me that speaks to what we just heard from, uh, from our, our Burgess teacher um, is that they also really appreciate teachers who challenge them who push the envelope and, and, and who really just help them go that one step further. And so I think that that's really important. I think it's also important to recognize that the research says that when we expose our students to college level work, um, whether it be through dual credit or through AP, that um, it really increases their chances of uh, completing a four year degree or as you said, going out and joining the workforce at a high level of pay with industry certification. So thank you for sharing that. I'll take a couple more thoughts and then we're going to move on. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Jenny Patino from MacArthur Pre-K through 8. Also the very best Pre-K through 8. We, have. we have some competitive people in this crowd. <laughs> so one of the things that our table came up with is um, we would like to really see more involvement with community, uh, making connections to schools in the sense of um, building our students to be employment ready mm -hmm. and all that that entails, interviewing, um, really sharing with them what it is to be employed in different parts of society, right? Do you need a degree for every career? No. And there are very lucrative careers that you don't need degrees for. Um, everyone needs a plumber, and they make very good money um, with the more education they get. So those kind of things, but also um, building, their, um, building their understanding of what's available to them in certain jobs, maybe even an internship program. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have limited internship kind of programs for high schools, but we're thinking more like, wide, um, a wider kind of net, casting a wider net, and including those kind of businesses like plumbing and um, trades, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. I external internships for our students are critical and very important, so I appreciate you sharing that thought. We're going to transition into our next exchange in just a minute, but I don't want to forget also about those of us who are in the gallery and those of us who are out there um, joining uh, via live stream. Uh, Please enter some thoughts and your ideas in the chat as well as part of discussion, even though you're not here live. All right, so we're going to move on to, and I want to thank you all because this first exchange worked beautifully. So we're going to move on to the next one. And so the next one, and it's going to be the same process. All right, you go into your the QR code. So those of you who are listening via live stream, uh, either go to tjoin.com or uh, the number is there or the QR code. Those of you who are in the gallery and then those of you who are sitting at your table. And the next question or thought that I'd like you to, to, to process is, what are some things we need to address to make these possibilities a reality. So we've talked a lot about what we know and what we think is possible for the future of El Paso ISD. What are some things that we'll need to do to address those things to make them a reality?
And if you have, are having any technical dis the difficulties, raise your hand and we'll come help you.
Keep generating those thoughts and go back into right. Keep generating thoughts and go in and write. Give you another couple of minutes. We have about a minute left. Okay, you have about 30 seconds. I'm going to bring you guys back in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so um, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. So we've generated a lot of thoughts, and some of the things that have risen to the top, obviously compensation is something that um, all stakeholders feel is important for us to address. If we, if we want you know what we talked about in the first thought exchange to become a reality we have to pay attention to those who are doing the work each and every day right and that is all employees within El Paso ISD you know our custodians our cafeteria workers our teachers everyone plays a role in educating our students so that was something that absolutely rose to the top not necessarily just in terms of monetary compensation 
But what I read in some of the thoughts is also, you know, um, high quality professional learning and, you know, training teachers. I saw some uh, statements about supporting teachers and, and being supported in the job that they do. And that goes for a number of different employees. I also saw a statement that talks about action from those, scroll up a little bit, Gustavo, action from those, no, scroll up, scroll up there, action from those who are able to enact change, right? Because people want more than words, they want follow through, they want leadership, right? And then there was another one that I saw in there that talked about bringing the joy of learning back to the classroom. You think that's very, very powerful. So I'm going to give you about two, yeah, bring the joy of learning back to students, teachers, and staff by making facilities inviting, improving workplace environment, and lessening demands. Um, I also saw another one that I, I like to call, it's like all the different cogs have to fit together, right? It's about the students, it's about the teachers, it's about the community all coming together to really, um, you know, develop some synergy uh, for high quality education for our students. So I'm going to give you some time to discuss at your tables some of the thoughts that were generated, what does that look like, feel like, sound like, and then we'll share out very... Um, um, we'll, we'll share out a few thoughts and then we'll begin to wrap up. So have some discussions at your table. about 30 more seconds to have a little bit of a discussion at your table. I could have you back in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so this time around, I want to hear from parents and community, right? Because we heard from students and teachers uh, primarily for the first exchange. So I'd like to uh, hear some thoughts from um, our parents and uh, from community. So, all right, parents, who's out there that's bold, that wants to share some thoughts? Okay, right here. Stand yes, stand. Uh, give us your name. Tell us who you're representing and share Hello. your thoughts with us. Hello, I'm Flo Rosales, representing MacArthur, mm -hmm. General MacArthur, pre-K-3. And we were addressing bring the joy of learning back to students, which is one that you mentioned, students, uh, teachers and staff by making facilities inviting, improving workplace environment, and lessening demands. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the things that we talked about is that it really begins at the elementary level. Mm -hmm. That has to be such a fun, joyous experience. Uh, because we see that kids in elementary are riddled with stress. Mm -hmm. And if your elementary years are not fun and exciting, it's going to pave the way for how you feel about school later on. Mm -hmm. And so we think it starts at the elementary. Let's right. keep it fun. Let's keep it light. I mean, while still, of course, advancing and doing things. And you're going to have a pivot somewhere where a middle school teacher changes your life or a high school teacher guides you to what maybe career you will take. But the elementary students, everybody comes in excited, ready to learn. And if we steal that joy from them, we kind of set a path for them. Right, that way. absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. I do believe that the joy of learning is critical as part of the learning process. And so high levels of engagement, uh, and again, not necessarily just for the elementary, but I, th I know that that's where it starts. Uh, but as students matriculate through our organization, you know, we shouldn't see that loss of, of the joy for learning, you know, as they become middle school and high school. So, great. Thank you so much for sharing that thought. We have another thought over here from a parent. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Erica, a parent here from Burgess. Um, I think one way to bring joy back to learning is beginning with the teachers who love to teach. Mm -hmm. Having teachers who don't refer to online platforms like you know, um, but themselves actually showing the material because it's the, the learning is not just to pass a test but it opens their doorway again like as we said to universities or other um, you know tech schools or other careers that are out there but I think that begins with the teachers enjoying teaching absolutely so teachers coming you know with passion and you know sometimes you walk into a classroom and you know you know a teacher is just in love with what they do because it just exudes right you know they're just they're so excited they're so passionate they love what they do every day and that really translates and really transfers to the students and so when they say what they want from a teacher, they want a teacher who, you know, teaches with lots of ganas, right? I mean, that's what they want. So, uh, all right, community members, I need to hear from some community members. So, all right, we got one over here. Awesome. My name is Hampton Hurt. I'm a retired football coach, teacher from Cathedral. I finished, mm -hmm. spent 17 years here at Burgess. Spent 40 years in the public schools, have three kids that graduated from Burgess High School and went on to degrees and graduate degrees and working for EPISD as one of them. Uh, the major thing that we brought up or I brought up in the, together, in our discussion was uh, every day we're being judged compared to Isleta, Socorro, Canutillo, and usually we get judged athletically. But not only athletically, the marching band. Burgess used to have a marching band that was great, and I believe with the improvement of the facilities here at Burgess, we got a new baseball field, we got a new softball field. But the general field house for our athletes is not there. You got the same weight room you had when I was here. You know, Coronado's been improved, but their athletic facilities is still what it was. Uh, I can't speak for the other schools because I haven't been there, but generally, our athletic improvements are not there. And we're being judged, and you'll see improvements in the facilities will be answered directly with achievement on the field mm -hmm. or in the marching band for that matter but facilities is our, mm -hmm. our major. absolutely and thank you for sharing that because you know you heard me say, uh, share that um, a, a lot of thank you very much for sharing we appreciate that um, 
so a lot of what I've heard as a superintendent uh, early on um, is that, as I said, the average age of our facilities is 50 years old, right? And the learning spaces matter. And, and not only the learning spaces in the classroom, but our facilities as well, all around. Um, because that also contributes to the joy of learning, right? Because what we, what, when we educate our children, we're not only thinking about what's happening in the classroom, we're also thinking about what are ways that we're connecting students into their school community so they're not just coming and going from school but they're really part of a, of a larger school community. And athletics serves to do that, uh, band, student council, all of the things that we offer, but facilities matter with that as well. So I appreciate you sharing that um, with us. So we're gonna wrap up today's conversation and I wanna wrap up by first thanking each and every one of you for engaging and being part of this conversation. Um, it was a little different than what we would normally do in a conversation, but we got a lot of information. We generated a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So I want to appreciate, I mean, I want to thank you and I very much appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us today. Those of you who, who shared your thoughts via live stream, thank you as well. And those of you who were in the gallery, I appreciate your participation. So want to tell you a little bit about what will happen as a result of what the conversation was today. Remember I shared with you that I have 10 hopes and dreams listening tours, one for each feeder pattern of the school district. This was our first. And so we will continue this conversation and I will continue this conversation across the school district because as we begin to generate thoughts and rate those thoughts on the, these two questions that you engaged with today, we'll begin to see what are the things that are common across the school district. Those themes that seem to be similar no matter where you go in the district. And then there may be some thoughts that are very specific to a feeder pattern. And so that might take a little bit of a different strategy here at Burgess than you might find in another feeder pattern, all right? So we'll be able to process the information in a number of different ways. Um, I want any of you who are out there to visit episd.org uh, slash hopes and dreams to continue to be part of the conversation and um, we're going to stay tuned because we're going to continue to engage this stakeholder group as we continue to generate the information. The work that I will do with the board once I finish all 10 of the listening tours is I'll bring back the information to the board and we'll work on developing our mission, our vision, our core beliefs and uh, commitments, our board goals, and it will shape the future strategic plan for the school district. This stakeholder group, and again, those of you who choose to participate in the gallery and will live stream any future meetings as we begin to develop the strategies that are going to address the things that we've said that we want for the future of El Paso ISD, we'll come back in conversations like this so that you all can provide feedback and thoughts on strategies that we've generated in terms of making these possibilities and these thoughts a reality. So this will not be the first engagement um, for you guys. So thank you so much for your commitment and I look forward to having this conversation with you. Um, and I want to leave you with this thought. Um, as we think about the possibility of El Paso ISD, the only way to control the future is to create it. And we all need to be part of that. Um, and so I thank you for your time this evening. E evening. Um, I appreciate your engagement. And I would be remiss if I, I didn't thank the people that made this possible. So I want to thank the principal and his staff from Burgess High School for hosting us today. Mr. Y, can you stand, please? Is there anybody from his staff that's here? If you all will stand and be recognized as well. Thank you all. Thank you, yes. Um, I know that we have uh, the principals from the rest of the feeder pattern that are here as well. Will you all stand and be recognized? 
Thank you all for being here and supporting your communities. Um, our uh, central office staff and our assistant superintendents, can you stand and be recognized? Because I know that they're here too to listen and learn. I want um, to thank uh, our executive level uh, cabinet members, uh, district leadership, if you all will stand and be recognized because they're here as well to listen to the conversation. I introduced our board president, uh, Mr. Velarde, who's here as well. Thank you, Mr. Velarde, for the work that you do as a volunteer uh, you know, for the school district. And uh, I want to thank the community engagement staff who has been working on making these listening tours a reality for several, several weeks. Gustavo Reveles and his team, uh, please give them a round of applause. And lastly, I want to thank you. Those of you who took the time to be here, give yourselves a round of applause because what you shared with me today is very valuable information. So again, thank you so much. We'll continue the conversation and I, I appreciate you. Yes, Carla? We um, on behalf of the Mighty Mustang feeder pattern, Burgess High School has a special presentation to you, Ms. Saivage. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you thank so you. much. I appreciate your leadership as students, and I appreciate the voice that you bring to the conversation. Thank you all thank so you much. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. Well, have a wonderful evening. Take your Chick-fil-A with you, um, and uh, we'll see you next time.